Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the Associated School Board's series of video casts on open meeting laws. I'm Wade Pogany, Executive Director of ASBSD, and with me today are Dr. Randy Royer, Director of Board Development, and Mr. Gary Kaufman, the uh, Director for Policy and Legal Services. And uh, they're joining me today to talk about open meeting laws, and this is the second uh, video cast in a series of two that are that is dealing with uh, executive sessions. So, gentlemen, thank you again for uh, for joining me. Um, in our first uh, discussion, we talked about the reasons why you can go into executive session, what the law says about that. But in in this session, let's talk about the mechanics of executive session itself and what we can do. So, what should a, a board consider before they ever think about going into executive session? Do do I need to be sure that that uh, if I anticipate this, that it's on my agenda? Does it have to be uh, posted in the agenda somehow? I would put it on the agenda and I would also then state the clause of why you're going into executive session, whether it be personnel or a student issue or whatever. Uh, so you're very clear and, and you're telling the audience this is why we're going into executive session. Okay, so we should think about that beforehand and it's not just something we just decide to do at the last minute. Um, it has to be planned. I think it should be on your agenda. Okay, okay. And, and I would agree, it's really not in the executive session statute, it's in a different statute, but the law says with the notice of meeting that has to be posted, a proposed agenda must also be presented so the public knows what the governing board is going to be talking about. So if there is an executive session that uh, the administration knows it needs to be addressed or the board knows it needs to be addressed, it goes onto that proposed agenda. On occasion there will be times when something might happen after the agenda, uh, proposed agenda is posted and there might be a reason for an executive session to evolve after that. Then at the time of the board meeting, when the board formally adopts its agenda, the governing board adopts its agenda. If there's not an agenda item for executive session prior to that time, it can be added at that time, you know, at the very, very beginning of the meeting. Okay. So let's talk about how we get into executive session. Let's say that there is a, uh, we, we know we can go into a to session for personnel, student reasons. So let's say there's a, a confidential issue related to a student. How do I get into executive session and who takes me into executive session? Uh, well, it's on the agenda. A motion is made by a, a board member and seconded, and then voted. that motion is voted on by the rest of the board. To just go into executive session at that to point? To go into executive session at okay. that point. Okay. And the, that motion that Randy was just talking about, again, by statute, the motion must include the specific statute, specific reason for going and wanting to go into executive session. And the law has recently changed in that respect. It used to be a motion second to go into executive session for a student matter. Now a specific statute must be cited mm -hmm. and it's recommended that motion second to go into executive session for student matter pursuant to SDCL 1-25-2 subsection 2. That is the specific statute reference to why they are going to exec session. So we, and, and the law requires that, and by putting it in the motion, you're following the law, and then it can also be included in the governing board minutes. Okay. So we really should be that specific. If we say student, look at subsection two of the, the five reasons, and then put that in the, in the motion. Correct. Okay. So we've gone into executive session now with a motion. Um, what happens in the, the physical environment? Um, you know, you may have uh, parents or media or other people in attendance. Um, what does the board do then? Either the meeting room is cleared and then the executive session is held in that area, or sometimes boards go into another private room, but there is no public allowed unless they're part of that discussion. If it's a student issue and the parents are there or uh, some other issue like that. But the board decides who can stay in, yes. in, in that room, but it's a, it, it's a closed meeting at that point. Yes. It's a closed meeting. The, the, many schools and boards will have a board policy 
in terms of who is in executive session when. And ultimately that is a school board determination, a, either through policy or application of their policy. It is ultimately the decision of the board who has the right, other than the board, board members, to be in executive session and for how long. It's possible that a person could be in executive session for only a portion of that executive session. They may not have the, the liberty to be in executive session there the entire time. It's solely a board decision. So I'm, I'm in executive session now. Um, who, who's in charge of executive session? Who, who's actually running that part of the meeting? Is it still the board chair? Uh, generally, yes, but it depends on the situation. If it's a, a judicial hearing by the board, say for t teacher termination or a, a student matter, that there's lawyers involved, sometimes then the lawyers would be in, in charge of that meeting. Okay, okay. So we're in session, and, and I've uh, we, we've designated in this scenario that we're talking about a student issue. Um, so I, I need to stay on topic, as you would say, in that executive session. Um, and why is that? Because you, you, you specified why you're going into an executive session, you need to follow that. Okay. You cannot stray from that topic and if you do, it's up to the, actually all of the board members but certainly the chair to make sure you get back on topic and stay within the guidelines that, uh, of the clause. So I, I can't really say we're going to go into executive session but you know we still need to talk about buying the bus and I, I should stay no. away from that because no. we have a stated purpose in this and we need to stick to that purpose, correct? Again, Absolutely. yes, the statute is very clear that this Discussion uh, to be held in executive session is restricted to what the motion indicates as being the reason for going into executive session. And as we mentioned during the, the initial broadcast of this, it's a criminal violation to be violating these rules and it can subject a board to be um, subject to a complaint filed with the Open Meetings Commission. The rules are that significant and that serious that they need to be recognized and followed. Other thing I would say about the straying on executive session, Randy indicated it as well. All the governing board members have a responsibility in controlling that discussion. So if it strays, every one of them have a responsibility of making sure it stays on task. And if a business manager or superintendent are in the executive session, um, they are being taught regularly to help keep boards stay on task. So if a governing board or a board member is told by a superintendent or business manager, you're straying, come back on, that is because those school administrators are very much aware that it is that significant to stay on task and those administrators are trying to help their board stay on task. Okay. Now you can discuss more than one item in an executive session, but make sure that's specified in the motion and in the, in the agenda. Okay. So if you're going in for a personnel issue as well as a student issue, I would specify both of those in the motion okay. uh, and then also in the agenda, but also then make sure that those topics are the only okay. thing you talk about. Can, can a vote be taken in executive session? Um, if we've talked about a student issue and we need to have a decision made, can a vote be taken in, 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 uh, in that situation? Absolutely not. Uh, uh, law is very specific that all official action has to be done in open session. Okay. A vote is an official action. There can be discussion, of course, in executive session, but if it's a student matter, employee matter, maybe even a legal matter, Okay. The board can come out, is not required to make a motion after it comes out of executive session because maybe there's no formal action or decision to be made. Right. But no decision, ultimate formal decision is made in exact session. It's always made in open session. And that would include coming out of executive session then. There, there is no motion made to come out of executive session. It's just declared that way, correct? Uh, the chair declares that we're officially out of executive session and then it, we're now in open session and that's all that's done you really can't make a motion to come out of executive session because like Gary said you can only make motions you can only act as a board in that capacity in open session once we're out of executive session now what's the responsibility of a board member and or anybody else who is in in that meeting after executive session that's a confidential uh, meeting so we can't talk about it after that correct strict confidentiality okay 
Right. There are no specific statutes related to school board member confidentiality. Um, school administrators are under their code of ethics, and that is to recognize confidentiality. Where the rules of confidenti confidentiality are as they apply to a board, one is if there is a board policy that addresses executive session, school board member code of ethics, and things of that nature, or second, if that confidentiality is breached, now I'm going to use an employee matter just by way of example, maybe even a student matter, that there can be lawsuits filed against individual board members and boards as entities in the school district for that uh, breach of confidentiality for the invasion on the right of privacy. And therefore, the rule is, what it, it, unless under judicial court order, that uh, a board member is required to discuss, uh, you know, whatever happened in exec session. You know, otherwise, it's off limits. You don't talk about it. So if someone asks me or a, a reporter says, um, so what would you talk about in there? Uh, it's best uh, because of other laws that I should really uh, uh, remain silent and just say, all I can share with you is what happened in public. Exactly. Or, or the reason we went into executive session. The reason going in and what we talked about when we came out. But exactly. nothing right. happened internally. Yes. And Gary, you mentioned before this all falls under what we call OMC, uh, the Open Meetings Commission, uh, looks at violations in this. And, and uh, what are some consequences of violating an Open Meetings Law? Again, there's two consequences for violating open meetings law. One is a criminal violation that uh, can be brought by the state's attorney against members of the governing board. You don't see that happening. It hasn't happened to my knowledge in this state, but my own opinion is it's only a matter of time because in approximately 2005, uh, legislature created the Open Meetings Commission. If there's a complaint regarding a, an exact session violation, it goes to the state's attorney. The state's attorney can refer it up to the Open Meetings Commission, and the Open Meetings Commission will receive information on what happened, the complaint, the defense against the complaint, and if the OMC believes Open Meetings Commission determines that the governing board has violated the Open Meetings uh, Law, then the OMC, Open Meetings Commission, will issue a public reprimand to either individual board members or to the board as an entity uh, for that violation. Okay, okay, great. So we, we have to make sure that we, um, we post it on the agenda, we have to cite the reason we're going into executive session, uh, follow the procedures in executive session, come out, keep it confidential, uh, and then only vote on on a discussion if we need to uh, in public then. And um, so stand we, we invite them then. Great. Yep. Uh, anything else that we need to know about uh, executive sessions and the, and the procedures that we have? Is that about everything we need? That's about Great. it, but it's, it's the law. <laughs> it's the law. Thanks, gentlemen, for joining me on, on these uh, these discussions. Uh, very helpful, and uh, I'm hoping that board members will um, uh, see some um, uh, good things that come out of uh, these procedures. Thanks again. Thank you. You're welcome.